So five for 181. Stephen War on 49. Oh, and that's his 50. He's played it away nicely on the onside. It'll be picked up on the boundary. So just a single. And Stephen War just acknowledging the applause. He's come in and uh, once again he's looked pretty good. So Stephen War 50 in the commentary box now. Ian Chapel and Ian Buffett. Thanks, Tony. Well, Australian fans have come to expect it from Steve War now. Every time uh, he walks to the crease when Australia are in trouble, they are expecting him to do something. He hasn't let them down today. Also, his 17,000th first-class run. And certainly, fans around Australia expect uh, similar things from Ian Healy when the team's in trouble. He's another man who uh, always seems to get them when the team is in trouble. Cork has done a very good job for uh, England. He's bowled very tidily and he's picked up two wickets. It's been a mixture from Dominic Cork. He's, he's kept the batsman pretty tight, but he's also he's never stopped attacking. He's the sort of bowler who's always looking for a wicket. He's combined the two jobs pretty well. Chance just short. Nasser Hussain getting it on the first bounce. That's a terrific line. Getting the batsman to come to him. And here he getting quite a big edge. Dropping short. And Nasser Hussain. And there's been quite a few that have dropped short today, which has surprised me a little bit. Probably expected there with the ball. Only what, 10, 12. So I was away from the new ball. So he's been doing it all day. No. The one area that uh, Dominic Cork has improved a lot on is worked at, and in the management have been onto him for a while now, is to work on that line. He keeps on thinking he's going to get the ball to swing. Or well, like every bowler, he wants to just pitch about uh, middle leg and hit the top of off. They've been getting him to work on that off stump and just outside, and he's been rewarded today. Two wickets. Oh. That's a very good over. It's over. Five for 184. Australia five for 184. Steve Waugh has just reached his half century, and in the process scored 17,000 first-class runs. Reaching that figure with his 50, Ian Healy on four. It's been uh, what you would class as a typical Ashes day. Good battling cricket. Batsmen uh, getting on top for a while and the bowlers hitting back. England with two quick wickets. Uh, having Australia in trouble. We're uh, running on this day uh, quite regularly. Max Kruger uh, keeps his diary of things that happened uh, on this day and last year, November 20, we saw some brilliant catching from the Australian side. Mark Waugh set the pattern with his diving effort. Chris Cairns was the batsman and uh, was diving on the sand pit there in Perth. They had some problems with the field, but that is a magnificent catch. One of the best fieldsmen uh, in the world, Mark Waugh. Going off his talents on that occasion. His brother wasn't to be uh, left out of the action. In fact, it was brilliant catching uh, throughout that uh, innings. Michael Kaspervich, the bowler, and Brian Young, the batsman. Steve Waugh, not much emotion, as always, from Steve Waugh. Yeah! Simon Cook, the bowler, as Ian Healy grabs uh, Blair Pocock. Simon Cook went on to get five in that uh, game. And Greg Blewett at that pad. Catches Stephen Fleming. Oh. Australians in brilliant catching form on this day last year in the test against uh, New Zealand, played in Perth.
Just the one slip at the moment for England. I think Alex Stewart's done a pretty good job today, but uh, I, I think he might just have in mind Steve Waugh's record and uh, be a bit too conscious of that and consequently perhaps not quite attacking him as he should with five down. It's hard to ignore a record such as Steve Waugh's and yet again he's come out and done the business. Really is an amazing player and seems to have been around forever. But no, I agree, Ian. I think there's one area that we could improve on. Well, that, uh, to me, I suppose you wonder if there's another inside edge on that because pretty adjacent initially. I think, uh, yeah, another inside edge onto the pads. Now, the one thing that uh, at times you think with Alec is that he could possibly be a little bit more aggressive for this field placings but very hard to criticize the quite clearly see the inside edge into the pad but all in all today England have stuck to the task pretty well Look at that for a record pretty amazing Waste of energy on that occasion. It's five for 184. Australia five for 184. They were four for 106. One stage when England grabbed a couple of quick wickets. No. Dominic Court really just concentrating on that off stump. It's not a bad ploy against Ian Healy. He likes to cut from pretty close to off stump. A few times I've seen him knock the ball on with an underneath edge good line I'm not quite sure whether to go back or forward then Get himself into a little bit of trouble but that's the line to work away maybe perhaps a little fuller than that or to be maybe a little over critical because it's been pretty hard work out there for the bowlers and they've done well Hi. Ian Healy coming in at 5 for 178. It was a pretty similar score when he came in to join exactly this man, Steve Waugh, against the West Indies at this very ground. And Ian Healy went on to make his uh, highest ever test score. That's well hit. Loves them on the pads and he knows how to deal with them. danger should you uh, stray onto that leg stump these Australian batsmen don't miss out and Ian Healy just a little bottom hand coming into that just picking it up over mid wicket and just save your energy you don't bother running for those loves it in that area It was actually 5 for 196 when Ian Healy came in against the West Indies. Joined Steve Waugh. And they took the score to 338. Steve Waugh making 66. Healy 161 not out. Right. But uh, it was certainly a stronger tail. You had uh, Paul Rifle batting at 8. Shane Warne was at 9 in that match. That's the partnerships uh, so far in this inning. 72 the best, Steve Waugh and Ricky Ponting. Maybe having had Australia 4 for 106, England wouldn't be uh, happy getting Australia out for anything under 300 but I think if you look at the pitch you've got to say any score under 300 England have done pretty well I think they started the game but you have to look at the way the uh, the bookies were laying at 350 370 they thought was the sort of score that should be scored on here and I think both, both captains would have felt that would be about par for the course so anything under 300 is a great effort no. 
as well bowled. Five for 188. Steve Waugh on 50. Ian Healy, 8. Very good Ashes battle. The first day of this series being played at the Gabba, mostly in sunshine, although we did uh, lose a bit of time because of bad light. 35 minutes, in fact. This is where uh, England need to maintain concentration. Might be just a little uh, frustrated with Steve Waugh. They know that he's uh, got this habit of playing well when Australia really needs it. Just started to bang a few in short. It's just the period when they need to maintain concentration and keep at the batsman, keep making him play and hope that he makes a mistake. He's pretty, uh, pretty casual man, just in jest there, holding the ball near the stumps uh, as Ian Healy had walked out of his crease, just suggesting that he might uh, flip them off, test the umpire out. Sorry, mate. Lally hasn't bowled a lot of short ones. He's probably bowled more at Steve Waugh than, uh, than anybody else. Last ball of his last over, he banged one in and really was a waste of energy. It went miles over the top. And uh, Steve Waugh is never one to look away from a bowler. He'll always uh, look him in the eye and see what he's, either what he's thinking. Nearly hasn't quite got it off the middle, but it'll get him four. Ian Healy quite happy to accept the uh, challenge. It's banged in. Gets well inside it. It's not uh, quite where he intended. Get some four runs. Might be worth trying another one. Over the top, four more. This is why Healy is so dangerous as a uh, lower order batsman. This is an area that he is very strong in. Anything short and wide of the off stump, he'll throw the kitchen sink at it. And, all right, it wasn't out of the middle of the bat and quite where he intended. He had enough bat on it. It really is help yourself to four runs buffet ball Bye. <laughs> that was a good over for Australia they moved along to five for 197 with Healy uh, once again quickly moving along to 16 three boundaries for Healy seven boundaries for Steve Waugh in his 51 Mark Taylor winning the toss. He made 46 in his 100th test match. Just a reminder for viewers in Sydney, Hobart and Melbourne. They'll be leaving uh, shortly for the news. There'll be uh, final scores in the news bulletins. And uh, later on this evening. And there will be highlights late tonight. Just check your uh, guides for those highlights. And it's going to be uh, the off spinner. Robert Croft now from the Stanley Street end. He's, uh, he's flighted the ball pretty well. <coughs> Certainly bowled accurately. Six overs, four maidens, none for three. But the important thing is he's, uh, he's bowled in an attacking style. And I think that's his best, his best method. Alex Stewart is giving uh, 
across two short men on the onside. It's almost an old, old time off spinners uh, field. Huey Tayfield of South Africa used to bowl with something similar. I would just like to see the man on the offside up there in at the silly point. I think uh, that it's a much dangerous position. I think it's also a field that the batsman can see. Yeah. War has been playing that sort of shot to quite a bit lately. We saw him play very well in the Commonwealth Games in the one day series there. He hit a couple of huge sixes over mid wicket. I think on that occasion it wasn't so much uh, that he was attempting to play the lofted shot, that was more the sweep shot. And perhaps because of that field placing that Alex Stewart has got. Seven fours for Steve Waugh. 25 scoring shots in his half century. Very strong behind the wicket as always, particularly square on the offside. interesting thing with that field placing for Robert Croft is uh, to utilize it fully he does have to flight the ball wide world of sports will be bringing you the second day of this test match from the Gabba tomorrow Australia versus England in the Ansett Australia first test off the glove or perhaps uh, the bat so we say goodbye now to viewers in Sydney Hobart and Melbourne see you tomorrow <laughs>